Yo, okay, Face Guy here. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And John Paul, man, he's been in like the last three videos that I've made. He's back again, and he's at the K-Pace Theater right now. We're going to give him a really brief tour. I mean, he watches the channel, so he knows what's in here, but you can't get a demo through YouTube, right? So we brought him down here to give him a demo of my Anthem slash Canton setup. So we're going to walk around real briefly, just in case you guys are new to the channel, and we'll show you what's all in here, show him what's in here. And then we're going to sit him down on the couch, and we're going to take a listen to the home theater and I'm it's he has I haven't even turned it on yet he has no idea what it sounds like he's never heard Canton speakers he's never heard rhythmic subwoofer never heard the defense technology nothing anything right so it's gonna be full his impersonation of the KPH theater and see if it's as good as I say it is when I talk on the channel so without further ado let's walk around here a little bit and and show you what we got all right we are gonna start off with the desk these are the Bowers and Wilkins 606 S2. So this is anniversary edition. I've had these probably close to two years now. And they're powered by the Aurelic amplifier that sits on the desk. These things are phenomenal. I have thought about getting rid of them, but they do sound really good. I don't listen to them very often though, just to play Xbox, but sometimes I do a little critical listening. And if you guys have watched my speaker reviews, my bookshelf reviews, this is where I do it at. And so this is my monitor I play on, the keyboard, Xbox, all that good stuff. But this is where I do my two channel listening at the desk if I want to. So that's what we got going on here. Let's move to what you really want to see, which is behind those closet doors there. A lot of you guys have been around the channel, so you guys know what's in here, but some of you guys don't know what powers the system. So in the closet here is where all the brains are at. I'm gonna have you step forward so that the light comes through there. There you go. We're going down from top to bottom. So this is the brains. This is the Anthem ABM 70 that I've had, I think last month was a year now, actually. Well, no, you made a video a while. I did a year later video, but it wasn't quite there yet. But I think actually end of February is when I bought it and March is when it came in. And so this is my brains here. I'll turn it on for you so you can see all this stuff. So Anthem ABM 70, my processor down below is the OSD Audio Nero XA5180. So this is the five channel, uh, 150 watts per channel, I think it is. I think it actually underrated. I think they sent out a new list to me. It's about 165 watts per channel for five channels. And this powers my four Dolby Atmos speakers that we'll get into here in a little bit. Solid performer. It's pretty similar to the Outlaw. I think 5000 it is. Uh, solid, solid, solid a little piece of equipment. I absolutely love this. It's actually given to me from OSD Audio themselves. Shout out to them. Moving down, it was a little piece of equipment that I picked up kind of recently, and this is the Panasonic DPUB820. This is uh, a very nice, very nice um, Blu-ray player. It does Atmos, of course, DTSX, everything you want it to. Uh, boots up quickly, haven't had any problems with it. A little bit dusty, all right, okay there for you, so you guys can see that. Need to do some cleaning here, but it's really nice. Of course, there's some remotes to everything, but I use a universal remote for all that stuff. And down here is one of the most underrated pieces of equipment in everybody's home theater. And this is the power conditioner. This is the APC J25. I've had this for probably six, seven, eight years now. And it cleans up all of my, uh, my power so that there's no like hum or feedback in my system. Sometimes when you're not listening to anything, but your system's on, you can hear like a buzz or kind of like a, a hiss. It completely cleans that out. Not only does it do that, but it also is a surge protector. So if there's any kind of like storm or anything like that, um, it keeps my stuff protected. I can't preach enough about protecting your investment because you don't want to come home from work after a storm and all your stuff is fried. It would ruin your life, <laughs> or at least it would ruin mine. Behind the uh, Panasonic is actually um, an AC Infinity fan. I think that's the T8. Um, I have it here because what it does is pull air up and then spits it out. It doesn't blow cold air in. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but it's behind there. It takes the heat and sends it up. And this down here, which we'll get to, is what gives me the most heat. So I have it in the middle and it blows it up and blows it out. These don't really get hot because these are not doing too much and this doesn't have any amplification at all. So that's back there. This is also a, uh, a backup battery. So if for some reason I lose power, I have X amount of hours of still have power. So I can still listen to my system or watch TV or discharge things or whatever. So it's a battery backup, it's a power conditioner and a surge protector all in one. So it's a really nice piece of equipment. I recommend everybody uh, getting a power conditioner of some sort. And this guy right here has changed my thoughts on home theater and music all together. The Monoprice Monolift 7. So this is a 200 watt times seven amplifier that powers all seven of my bass layer speakers. And this thing 
is a workhorse. It never gives up on me. I can turn it up well before it taps out, I tap out. Solid, weighs 100 pounds. Don't ask me how I got it in here. I tried putting it on a middle rack and it completely almost fell. <laughs> it's just, it's big. Um, I will probably never get rid of this unless I get like an, an, an Anthem, um, a power amplifier maybe, but those things are super expensive. But this thing is probably one of the best amplifiers on the market. So you'll get to hear that pretty soon. <laughs> And the Blu-ray collection. I'm still a fan of Blu-rays. I'm thinking pretty soon. Leave me a comment down below, especially you, JP. Leave me a comment down below and answer this question for me. Should I go to streaming movies now? Because it's so convenient. No. Everything He says no. I'm going to ask you why here in a second. Streaming video is so convenient. I think picture quality is getting there. Sound quality for me is the thing. Mm -hmm. Most of my videos are 4K Ultra HD. If not, they're just regular uh, Blu-rays. But sound quality is so important to me. I can be okay with streaming video quality, but the sound quality is what I care about. I spent all this money on the stuff I wanted to get the best audio that I can. But there's something about being able to pick up a disc and putting in a DVD player that's so nice. What are your thoughts on streaming versus physical discs? What do you think? Yeah! So, I don't have much Blu-rays because you know, I don't make enough money to get a ton of Blu-rays like this. But So when I watch movies, I, I usually stream. And I've noticed, like I... Uh, Prime Video Spectrum TV um, on demand. I've noticed that when I stream, there are times when it just dips, maybe from 4K to maybe like uh, 480p. And when you've got a Blu-ray, some of that might be your Wi-Fi. But uh, when you have a Blu-ray, it's consistent, and you don't need a Wi-Fi. So when your Wi-Fi goes down, I mean, you obviously can't watch a movie or stream. But with the Blu-ray, it's just so much more. It might be more expensive, but with my experience streaming it's just it can be much lower quality and I've seen like a, when there's a storm or something I'm trying to watch a movie the audio will dip and it's it's much more muddy and with streaming you can't really get 4k as much and we're kind of starting to see 8k and with streaming you can't like I said you can't really get 4k a lot of it's either 1080p and stuff so when you unless you buy a movie online you're most likely renting it and you're only getting it for like what like three or four days Obviously, these aren't going away in three or four days. They're always going to be here. That'd be more expensive, but the quality is way better. You get lossless audio. With streaming, you're not going to get really, you might, but Dolby Atmos, DTSX, stuff like that. You're really not going to get that with streaming. You're going to get that with most Blu-rays. Yeah. Blu-rays um, always have that high, higher end video and audio quality. So I don't, but I would definitely recommend getting Blu-ray. Yeah, you make a great point about getting 4k ultra hd image on streaming requires pretty good wi-fi speeds and sometimes wi-fi drops if you're downloading something on a phone you're on your tablet laptop your wi-fi speed drop meaning the image quality uh, on your video drops too it's always going to be consistent with this you can have it at your fingertips whenever you want to you don't need wi-fi for it so and then he mentioned 8k is coming out i know we're still probably far from that being a real thing but that means now we got to get wi-fi speeds that support 8k in the bit rate that it supports so I think there's always going to be a place for stuff like this. And just look, come into a closet and open it up and see all these movies. There's just something still so cool about it. And I took the time to make them alphabetical order. So there you go. And at the top, all this is stuff thing. Most of the stuff is what people have sent to me for review. Some of the stuff, um, of course, what I bought like this, for example. But a lot of the stuff in here is things that I've reviewed that people have given to me. I'm always grateful. And this reminds me uh, to stay humble because all the stuff here, I, I don't have to have it. People don't have to send me things, but they trusted me with it anyway. And so a lot of the stuff here I didn't buy. A lot of the stuff was given to me for review and I get to keep it. So I'm always grateful and blessed to do this. I keep the boxes. A lot of you guys ask me, why do you keep all these boxes? Well, I keep the boxes because a lot of times when I get something new or I don't use use it after reviewing, I give it away. And of course, it's nice to have the boxes to put them in to send to you for, for a giveaway. So definitely uh, subscribe because I only give away two subscribers. Keep that in mind. Let's show JP the speakers now. You ready? Yeah. All right, All right. JP, we're starting with the back of the room and we're going to go from the back to the front because it gets better as you go back to the front. So we'll start off with this little guy here. This is the Definitive Technology DN10 subwoofer. Active driver on the front and then two passive radiators on the side and it performs way bigger than it really is. You get to hear that. I'm actually really happy with this. I don't plan on keeping it forever. So remember, sub I give away to subscribers. <laughs> this will eventually be something I give away when I start getting uh, more subwoofers. Uh, we'll see my other one here in just a second. So this is kind of just hanging out for now. On top of that is a Dynasty Pro Audio wireless transmitter. So as you know where my stuff is at, it's a very far travel uh, to plug this thing up. So having a wireless transmitter makes that so much easier. Still keeps the same audio quality. You don't really have any issues with it, but it eliminates having to run a cord across the room, which I really, really appreciate. And real quick, yeah. I just want to say something. 
a lot of the Best Buy Magnolia theaters, maybe y'all have been to, mm -hmm. a lot of them, maybe it's the 12 or 10, I don't know, but a lot of them have the definite technology system, so I've heard this at Best Buy, I've nice. heard it here. In a know, room, yeah. But if y'all have been to any of the Magnolia theaters in Best Buy, they've always got these on, so you probably have heard this before. But you might not realize yeah. it, but this general sub is in the. That's area. really nice. If you heard that Best Buy, you probably heard the 12 inch. This is 10. They have an 8. And each of them perform a step higher than what they uh, size wise are. For example, the 8 performs like a 10, the 10 performs like a 12, 12 performs like a 15, according to the technology. And so far, it does perform bigger than it is. It's not a very big speaker at all. You guys can see like my hand on top of it. It's really nice. So, moving on from that, Canton. These are German speakers. Um, these are the Canton A26.2s, I believe, so the smaller bookshelf. I really like these things. I think they have American terms. I think they're about like a six inch driver, but slightly bigger than that. And they're ported on the back. Um, but I love the gloss white look with the black grill on there. I just had to go white. They come in, you know, coach gloss black or whatever. But I've had these for maybe two years now, and uh, they're not going anywhere. They're, you're gonna hear them, they're really nice. Even the bookshelves are. I think. These rival the Bowers and Wilkins, if not better, even though these are smaller and all that good stuff. I really like these. They sound amazing for not only just um, audio, but two-channel listening too. But I have them in my, my rears as my surround backs. Moving to on the sidewalls, so there's one there. There's also one to the left of you around here. These are the Canton uh, Adobe Atmos speakers. If I can remember the name, I'll tell you. Uh, I can't remember. I'll link it in the description. I'll pop it on screen. I guess the 500 or something like that. But I once had these as my Dolby Atmos speakers above my head on the wall. But you can see the angle of them. They're not a very sharp angle. It's not very angled at all. It's more flat than it is angled. And so it was hard to get them to be placed correctly for them to perform optimally. But they actually do incredibly well as side surrounds or back surrounds. They do sit so flush against the wall. And they're hanging by a screw like a keyhole, like a picture frame. So they're perfect um, for the application that they're in. I wouldn't mind getting two more of these and putting them on the wall back here. I think that would be really cool. And then maybe in the future, put these on the desk or something. It's a it's a wild thought. I don't know if I'll do it. But these are AR500, that's what they're called. AR500s at most speakers. They're really nice. They can sit on top of the cantons over there. They can sit on the wall, whatever you want to use. Um, you can even flip them on their head and put them, uh, let them stand up upright if you want to. So it's really nice, really weird design. So check this out. So they're magnetic if I can get it off. But the tweeter is on the bottom, and then this is on the top. Of course, the tweeter's on the bottom so that they're closer to the ear level, so that they angle down towards your ear level so that you can actually hear them the way you're supposed to. I think these are also the same drivers that are in the A26s that we just looked at. And then this is a, kind of mimics like a horn-loaded tweeter from like Klipsch. It's kind of recessed in the back. It's kind of a waveguide, so it disperses the sound. I mean, these German engineers know what they're doing. They really do, so I'm very happy with those. So I know, I mean, obviously that that's close to the couch and that's yeah. far away. Does it sound funny? I mean, I know you yeah, have to do for sure. crossover and stuff. So you're sitting here in this, obviously way mm -hmm. closer than that. Yeah, that's probably a question a lot of you guys are typing in the comment section right now. Dude, your speaker's so close. How do you deal with this person right here? Well, first off, I'm usually the only one here. So I sit there, so I'm not too much different, but this is obviously far closer. And so the, there's two things you have to do. One is turn it down. First and foremost, it's this level is a lot lower than almost every speaker in here because it is so close. But setting your distances is the key. So you can set distances on almost every receiver and the distance tells the receiver obviously how far your ear is from the tweeter. And it'll add delay so that it reaches your ear at the same volume and the same time as that one does. So to the brain, it doesn't sound like it's two inches from you because there's processing involved that lowers the volume and lowers the time that it takes for it to reach your ear. So obviously it's closer, so it delays it a little bit so that it reaches your ear at the same time and the same volume as every other speaker in here. So it's not a problem unless you're literally sitting right here, then you're screwed. So, <laughs> but it actually does really good. You guys may have solved this down here. These are going to go to my new subwoofer. We'll talk about that later. Let's move to the front of the room. Let me move this light so we can all Take a look here. So let's start off with the center channel. This is the A66.2 from Canton. You're welcome to take that grill off if you'd like to. It's I mean, pretty big. In YouTube, I mean, obviously I've seen YouTube, but in person, this thing is giant. <laughs> I mean, my hand, I mean, obviously when I got here, I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, this sub, <laughs> I mean, I, I sit, I, when I watch YouTube, I, I have his old screen, 103 inch. I sit yeah. 10 feet away from that screen, plus the distance from probably a wide camera lens from that to this, but this is giant in person. <laughs> I mean, 
Oh my god. Oh yeah. It's probably a good foot and a half. We'll get we'll definitely get to that thing. I love that thing. So it's eight sixty six point two, and so this is obviously Canton Center channel sitting on some stands I just bought from um, Amazon, but this is also ported in the back as well. Uh, incredible center channel. I've never heard a better sounding center channel. You can cross this over actually pretty low and get some good bass. Mm -hmm. I don't cross my center channels any, anything lower than 60 hertz because you start to get like a muffled sound. But this does so well on its own. I love this thing. I wish it was flat sometimes because this would be a good like LCR, left, center, right kind of speaker. So get three of these would be amazing. But as, as it is, it sounds really good. Um, I'm very happy with this. People ask me, do you love your Canton still? And I absolutely do. And I love that all the grills are magnetic, makes the face look good. If you're running price tag on everything, I actually got that center channel free. They go for like $8.99, but I got that free. Um, the Canton speakers that we'll talk about here on the right and left were $2,500 for, um, for one. So $5,000 for the pair. And then those speakers back there were, I think, I got them at a crazy deal at $5.99 for a pair, but you can't get them under 1000 And those were $6.99 a pair. I think you can't get those for under 1000 So I got lucky when I bought mine. Uh, shout out to Ryan, who uh, helped me find these for sure. So what he's looking at now are the Canton A96.2s. These things will steal your breath for sure. They're not very big in my personal opinion, especially because I came from the Polk LSIM series. They're taller and bigger. Uh, so I thought when I got these, oh my gosh, am I downsizing on my sound? But no, the better sound, smaller speaker, it's crazy. Um, the design of these are really nice. I'll try not to get in front of the light, but the design of these have like a curved look and it's functional. So the design helps with standing waves and cabinet resonance. So inside it's dead. So they don't reverberate, they don't vibrate, they don't cancel each other out. I believe each driver is uh, sealed off, so each has its own cabinet inside. And so it's some of the best sound that you're gonna hear at a speaker around this price range, or maybe even a little bit higher than it. And then you can see how they've done their tweeter design. You have a woofer on the top and then two on the bottom, and then a tweeter in the middle between. So that's like a MTM design, uh, mid, tweeter, mid. It, could, it keeps the tweeter at ear level. So most people who sit down are around that height. And so the tweeter is right where the ear level is and it just sounds so amazing. If you haven't seen my reviews on these things, definitely check it out. And then this guy right here, the Rhythmic Subwoofer. Man, I love this thing. <laughs> so if you haven't really been a fan of KP Sky yet, first off you should be. But second of all, I used to have SVS PB4000. I used to have two of them in this small apartment. And I got rid of them and bought a Rhythmic G25 HP. This is a dual opposed. 15 inch subwoofer, dual post, meaning there's two subwoofers in this one thing. So on the other side, there's another 15 inch driver. They're both active. And there is an amplifier on the back that gives us 900 watts RMS, 1800 watts peak. So each sub gets 900 watts um, and it's sealed. So you're getting some incredible sound. And this thing is so powerful. I thought that I wouldn't like it because it's not ported and it, it has less power than my PB4000s did, but you can't tell. This thing is incredible. And having two subs, two individual drivers, this basically is a 21 inch sub with the cone area that I have. So it, it's gonna rattle a lot of things in here. Somebody asked me on my comment section if this sub had any uh, subwoofer feet on the bottom. This sub has no feet on the bottom. When you have a sealed sub and they're dual posed, those drivers cancel each other out so that there's no vibration. You can put a glass of water or a penny on top of this and it won't vibrate because the speakers cancel each other out on the inside. And so there's no feet on the bottom to decouple the sub from the floor because the sub doesn't vibrate. There so is something under there though. There are um, sliders underneath there because this thing weighs 185 pounds. So the only way to move it is to slide it. And so there's sliders that Rhythmic gives you to slide it around in your room so that you can move it. Otherwise, because nobody, you're not picking this up. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> so that's what we got going on here at the top. You got the SVS uh, prime elevations. I have four of those, two in the front, two up there. Of course, I had those first and I got them in black and then I got new ones when I got my Cantons and that's why these are white and I swapped the grills out uh, because it looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing when all my speakers are white with black grills. These, in my opinion, are the best. You can take them off if you try. They're pretty up there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're in there for sure. Uh, but those things right there, um, I think hands down are the best uh, at most speakers that you can get. I think they're just so versatile. They're so well built. They play really loud so you can actually hear them from far distances. Uh, I think they are phenomenal uh, for any application. You can use my bookshelf speakers, Atmos speakers, in ceiling speakers, on wall speakers. You can put them on top of your speakers. They are so good. I would get them over any other Atmos speakers. KP Sky said it first. So I'm not an ambassador. I don't work for them. I just think they are amazing. And since you're up there, here's the new screen here. I don't remember exactly what this is. <laughs> I'll link a description, but this is from Elite Screen. 
screens. This is the 106 inch screen. This is actually new for 2022. This is not a gray screen, it's a white screen, but it, um, it's acoustically transparent. So if you wanted to put speakers behind it, you could look at JP struggling with the. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we'll ignore him for a second. But this is the screen here that allows you to put speakers behind it. It's acoustically transparent um, so that you can uh, put speakers behind it and kind of hide away your system if you have a dedicated home theater and then uh, different acoustic treatment all around the room. So really, really nice in my personal opinion. You, you gonna get it. <laughs> We're just gonna watch JP try to push this speaker back in there. Might need a time lapse. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna have to fast forward this, huh? If you can get the bottom two, maybe we get the top two after that. <laughs> Close. That's, That's good. good enough. That's good. All right, if it doesn't fall, we're good. All right, let's go on to the demo. Yeah. Good. The pan from the right to the left and the top going down, it just sounds wow. We'll turn it up a little bit. Wow. That sounds JP, thoughts on the uh, first demo? Now, wow, <laughs> there are booms when they're bombing. It, it, oh my gosh, my system. Oh my god, no. <laughs> this sound, I don't have words. When they're shooting, like from the right to the left, it pans real quick up here, back there. It's really hard to tell that you've got speakers. Like, there's one part. There's like a real. Um, I mean, it's supposed to fatiguing like. Uh, the shot was firing and it was real close to his head. I kind of got scared a little bit. <laughs> it, it sounds great. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, that that's probably the best. So guys, this, here's what's crazy about wow. this. So you guys know I've been in this apartment for this summer will be four years I've been in this apartment. And first and foremost, my neighbors, I told them before I did this that I was doing this. So I didn't disrupt anything and they were cool with it. But they didn't know I had any of this. This just goes to tell you that I'll ever turn it up. But today is the first day that I've ever turned it up past like maybe negative 35. We're on like almost negative 20 dBs right now. So we're pretty close to reference level almost there. I'm going to give them a reference level demo here in a second. But this is the loudest that I've ever sounded or turned up the system for my own personal usage. And it does sound incredible. I was walking towards the volume and I heard the Atmos speakers in the front. The bullet came past me. I literally ducked my head. It because sounds I've, great. Yeah, I've it never. Insane. It really does sound insane. And I'm not kidding you. I've never turned my system up because I'm in an apartment. I've got and cold chills. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I watch these videos all the time where people are like, oh my gosh, this sounds insane, but you cannot, I mean, words cannot, I mean, I just, it, I, I'm sweating, <laughs> there's so much pressure on my chest, the thing I love, there's so much pressure on my chest, and they're bombing, I mean, the bullets are flying, the cool thing is, when it pans from right to left, it comes from that right, right there, um, right there, right there, and it pans. All the speakers are coming from right to left. I, I'm actually, I love the sound of these. I, I might actually save up my mic <laughs> because these sound so real. Like when they're shooting and the guy's getting like shot, and you can see the bullets coming through his back, and it's pretty gory. But it, it just sounds insane. I mean, cool. those towers just in the bass, it all comes together, and it's super smooth. I can't explain. It. Yeah. Not like a 
Turn up just a little bit. Oh. <laughs> no way. We just knocked off a speaker. <laughs> You're recording? Yeah. We knocked it off. We'll keep going though. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> we'll see how many more speakers we can knock off with this part. <laughs> Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. It gets pretty loud right here. No. That sounds pretty loud. It's louder now. Good luck. Oh, I thought it wasn't working. It's because she's deaf. I thought you were Yeah, <laughs> she's deaf. I'm gonna pause it right there. Alright, before we ask JP what he thought about that demo, we got a speaker that fell off, off the wall in the middle of the demo. That's the second time it's happened. It happened with the P4000s, but that thing took a trip. That thing flew off. Like, look where it's at and where it was. <laughs> JP, what do you think about the Quiet Place demo? Wow, well, I mean, my palms are sweating, my chest, I'm breathing heavy. Oh my gosh, it's, it's just so rich, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's. It's. it's Mm, there's like tinny bass, which is like more of just sound. It's not bass, kind of like what you get with like AirPods <laughs> and stuff, or just cheap subs. And then there's 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 good bass, like you you can hear it. It sounds good, but this is rich, deep, deep bass. It's like it sounds really good. The floor is shaking. This thing where my feet are, they're shaking. It just <laughs> sounds really, really deep. It's like. It's like when you eat, like, cake or something. It's it's good, but there's some cake. It's just really rich, and it's like... <laughs> this, this is that rich cake. This is the deep... Oh, and it's, it's so crazy, guys, because... Let me stop this little recording, but this... They're sealed. Both subs are sealed. And people think when you have a sealed subwoofer that you don't get the bass in your chest. You don't feel it. I've never heard it. a sealed sub. So now, I... I mean, I've always thought, okay, so I want to get um, ported sub because if you get ported, you're getting all that air. But no, with this sealed <laughs> one, it's like, whew, I mean, like, it's intense. And I, I don't even think we've gotten to the main part where there's a part where he's, um, like, upstairs and you yeah. can hear him with the Atmos. And he's there's a part where he hits his hand on the rail and it's like, Doof! but I have never heard this much of just beating you in the chest. <laughs>
guys. So we've done three different demos with JP. This is the first time that I've heard the system at this volume. I've had the system probably how it is for close to a year now, and I've never changed. I never turned it up. I've never done these demos on it. This is the first time. I have my own things to say that maybe I'll save in a different video. This is about my guy JP and his experience for his first time listening to Adobe Atmos system. So JP, end this out. Tell me what you thought about the system. So it's just. Coming from me, who has two in the front, two in the back, well, two a little bit in the back, just smaller ones. This sounds insane. I mean, like movies that I've seen that just sound way different in here. Like it'll come from the back, then it'll come from the front, and it'll come, like it'll come from the back, and then it'll come in the front, and then it'll come from the sides. It's just, it's just so enveloping. And I, I think I've said it again. I, I'll say it again, but. The subs just sound, they get so deep, and they don't, what's it called, they don't tap out like mine will do, like, like, when it gets to a certain point, they just won't do it anymore, but these just sound so smooth, and so rich, like when there's a pound, it literally sounds like someone's, like, bombing your house or something in real <laughs> life, it sounds really good, I mean, like, just the fact that these are coming from subs in a box, I mean, they sound insane, and what are they both sealed? They're both sealed. They're both sealed, and they're not even ported. I can't imagine how it'd sound if they were ported. Ported, but yeah. for sealed subs, I mean, the, what are those two eighteen? Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Yeah, wow. and then one ten. Wow. With two ten inch past the radiators. That yeah, it just sounds insane with the bass, the clarity from these speakers. They're just giant, and then just the full uh, seven point two point four. Got it. Right. Yep. Sounds insane. Yeah, I'm it's insane. The Guys, best sound I've ever heard. <laughs> he has to get out of here. We had a lot of fun. We asked my, I asked my neighbors or, that is okay for before I did this. So if you're worried about my neighbors, we all know I was doing this. I may bring them in here one day and see what they think about it, especially after they, I know they heard it <laughs> with these demos. Sensational uh, sound system. I know it's mine, so of course I'm going to say that. But again, I haven't heard my system over like maybe negative 40 decibels. I don't turn it up ever. I'm respectful to my neighbors, but they gave me the chance to turn it up today. Uh, we were below right reference level we didn't get past negative 20 db we have a lot of headroom in here especially being a small room so i got a chance to really hear what it could do and i'm excited all over again to <laughs> to have all this stuff and now he's thinking about finding himself a pair of canton speakers it's definitely a process you got to kind oh, yeah. of build your way up there because these suckers are cost too much <laughs> uh but if you if, if you work your, your butt off you can get there so jp thanks so much man for coming over making another video yeah. check him out on subscriber showcase actually started last Wednesday or this past Wednesday so if you haven't seen it go back and watch that every Wednesday we'll do an episode you'll see his on there as well thank you guys so much for watching hit that like button subscribe to the channel we'll put JP's Instagram down below if you want to shout him out and talk to him ask him some questions we'll put it in the description box down below but we'll see you guys in the next video K-Pace guy out peace